Okay, uh, continue on our presidents. Uh, the next president, next forgettable president, is James Garfield. Uh, he's only going to be president for one year, and most of that year, he's going to be sick. He is our second president, Abraham Lincoln the first, Garfield the second to be assassinated while in office. Uh, you can see that he is a dark horse candidate. Uh, good question to ask yourself: Who was the first dark horse candidate? ever to be elected president? James K. Polk, Napoleon of the Stump. So that's a little trivia. And another quiz I'd like to ask yourself without looking at your notes, without looking at your notes, ask yourself again, what are the three main political issues of this time period that every president had to deal with? And unless you can answer that, you're not ready yet. You got to keep. You got to know those three political issues of this time period. So, without looking at your notes, can you answer that? That's right. Okay. Hard money versus paper money, currency would be one issue in terms of that. Number two, the spoil system versus the civil service system. And number three, the tariff. Those are the issues. And as we look at each president, we want to be con concerned with that. All right. Well, you can see that Garfield is a dark horse candidate. Um, he went to the Republican convention in 1880 to nominate somebody else. And in the process of nominating, matter of fact, the guy that he was going to nominate was um, William Tecumseh Sherman's brother, the famous general from the Civil War. It was his brother that Garfield had come to nominate. And one of Garfield's strengths was that he was a great speaker. And when he got up to nominate his candidate, people were more impressed with his speaking skills than they were with his candidate. And uh, as you can see, 36 ballots, and they, they still hadn't found a candidate that they wanted to. So because of his good speech, he ended up being nominated to run for the Republicans for office. Much to his chagrin, he had no desire to be president. At the convention, he tried to turn down that. I know this because my wife got me this book for Christmas, Destiny of the Republic by Candace Millard. And so I'm reading, reading about the Garfield assassination. And it is a fascinating thing. And anyway, <clears throat> he's going to get elected. And he's a Republican. He's going to get elected. We'll go over all of the election charts when we get first day when we get back to school. Now, his philosophy in terms of the spoil system is Garfield is a half-breed. In other words, he favors either A, the hiring of people that deserve jobs, that are, are, um, are fit for the job, or B, civil service reform. He's going to battle with Roscoe Conkling, and I would double underline the name Roscoe Conkling, and uh, that he is a stalwart. Okay, write that term down under him. He's going to battle with Conkling over the spoil system and civil service. Okay? But unfortunately, his presidency won't last long. All right? uh, he's going to be assassinated by an office seeker, uh, a, guy, a guy by the name of Charles Guiteau. That's French. Let me spell the last name for you. Uh, G-U-I-T-E-A-U. Charles Guiteau. Okay? Uh, reading this story, Guiteau spent several years at the, uh, oh, what was the name of the, gosh, I'm going to forget here, the Utopian Society in New York where they allowed free sex. And you guys, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But uh, he spent six years there. <laughs> None of the ladies wanted to have sex with him. <laughs> and in the end, he's going to quit. It's, it's a pretty funny story. But in the end, this guy goes a little bit crazy. All right, and uh, his brothers and sisters tried to have him put in an insane asylum. And at any rate, uh, as soon as Garfield got elected, in those days, believe it or not, there was a time period every day where you could wait in line, meet the president, all right? And Guto came and said, hey, Mr. President, so glad you got elected. Love to, love to work for you. Do you have a job for me? And Garfield said, uh, you know, come back next week. And he came back next week. 
uh, come back next week. And in the end, uh, you know, he had to just finally tug your toe. No, I'm not going to give you a job. Okay, so forget it. And because of that, um, Guiteau is going to uh, follow, stalk, if you will, the president, meets him in the train station, and uh, ha and shoots him. Okay? Now, he shoots him, but, but Garfield doesn't die for quite a long time. Um, for about, he will survive about two months. And in the end, we're pretty sure it's not the bullet wound that killed him. In fact, if doctors had just let the bullet lie where it was, like Andrew Jackson, he probably would have lived out the rest of his days and been okay. But he didn't. Uh, the doctor on charge was a guy named Dr. Bliss. Took his finger, started digging around in the wound, see if we can find that bullet. We know where the hole is. Can we find the bullet? And uh, did more, more damage than good, caused infection. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, it also has a kind of a, a magnetic uh, metal detector, if you will. And he tried to locate the bullet where it was and was kind of shooed off by Dr. Bliss. In the end, uh, Garfield will survive about two months, bedridden the whole entire time. And in the end, because of the prodding and the infection that goes on, he's going to die. Okay? He's going to be succeeded by his vice president, now, Chester Arthur never really held a political position, active in the Republican Party after the Civil War, but his main job, the only thing that he ever really got, was he was the customs duty. He was the tariff collector in the Port of New York, which uh, uh, provided about 80% of our national treasury. So many boats came in bringing foreign goods that it, it, uh, it funded the majority of our national treasury. So this is a plum position. Uh, he was nominated as vice president uh, hope, uh, by Roscoe Conkling to sort of balance out the ticket, right? Uh, Garfield being in favor of civil service reform. And we assumed, they assumed that Chester Arthur would be against it, that he was more of a stalwart, right? But in the end... Okay. By the way, this is the fourth president, vice president to assume the office of presidency. Be good for you to go back and think about who are the other three that became president because the guy in front of them died. Can you name those? He's the fourth. There's nine altogether. Okay. Um, he was a stalwart, but when Garfield passes away, uh, Chester Arthur is going to do a flip-flop. And he will sign the strongest civil... As a matter of fact, he will invent civil service uh, system by signing something known as the Pendleton Civil Service Act. Write that down. Pendleton Civil Service Act, signed into law in 1980, or 1882 by Chester Arthur out of respect for the fallen president. Okay? And class, the, uh, you can, if you turn in your book to page 519... There's a nice chart. Okay. Basically what the Pendleton Act did, okay, first of all, we call it the Magna Carta of Civil Service. It creates the civil service system that we use today. Right. And number two, it's going to require that people who want a job in the government, first of all, be able to pass a test. And in fact, that if a civil service job came open in the government, that it would be opened up to anybody and the person with the highest test score would then get the job. So you got a job based on what you know, not a job based on who you know. What the chart on page uh, 519 shows you is that when Arthur became president, 10% of government jobs uh, were required to take that test. And then as you can see, and it's not just each president, but you can see as time goes on, more and more and more jobs requiring that you a be able to pass a test and that jobs that would require applicant to take a competitive exam and the person with the highest score will get the job not the person uh, that has the favorite uncle or president in the office at the time right and you can see that the percentage of civil service jobs increases over the years and years right number three 
it established a civil service commission. And the beginning was three guys, and all in favor of civil service reform to establish these competitive exams, to make up the exams that constituents would have to take, job applicants would have to take if they wanted to. Okay. Again, number four, government workers now got jobs based on what they know and not who they know. All right. So this is huge. And I would put five stars by the Pendleton Civil Service Act. And I got to warn you, it's one that AP students sometimes forget. Okay. In terms of the tariff, we, uh, Chester Arthur was in favor of lowering the tariff. Okay. And he introduced a tariff that was supposed to reduce it significantly, but special interest groups got involved. And in the end, he did reduce the tariff, but only like one and a half percent, much to his chagrin. All right. That's Chester Arthur. Because he passed the civil, uh, Pendleton Service, Civil Service Act, uh, the stalwarts will not allow him to run for president again. So his, again, less, even less than one term as the president. 